Ah, Walter. 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 <laughs> a name that's been mispronounced almost as much as Heckler and Coco Gaga. How are you guys doing? Joe here. And in today's video, we are taking a look at a Walter. And yes, I use the hard T because that's how they pronounce it. A Walter. Actually, Walter. But I'm not going full German because I'm not. This is a really cool gun. It's one that I haven't owned yet. I don't think I'm adding this one to the collection. You'll see why when we look at it, but it's a hell of a gun. And this one came from Liberty Arms. I had him pick me some guns. He grabbed me three guns that I didn't know what they were until he brought them to me. And this is one of the ones for the blind bag or the mystery bag review. This is the Walter PDP Compact. It's not the F. The compact F stands for female, but it actually is a more comfortable gun. Actually, I don't think it is. Nope, it's the PDPC. Yeah, I knew what I was saying. Shut up, Joe. And this one again comes from Liberty Arms uh, in Harrisonburg, Virginia. If you're looking for a Walter, give them a call. Tell them you're looking for one. They'll hook you up. Maybe this one's still available. It's a great choice if you're looking for one. It's uh, not a great choice if you're looking for a bazooka. Taking a look at the price tag, this is a used one, but it's never been fired. Typically, this happens a lot more with firearms than you think. Guys will buy a gun. I'm guilty of it myself. I've bought numerous guns, never fired them, and just gotten rid of them because I just didn't like them. Uh, but this one is the PDP 9mm Compact with the 4-inch barrel. As you can see, they got 550 bucks on it, which is not a bad price, considering that this one is the optics cut version. And I believe they are like $650 or $700 MSRP, or actually mapped. They have a map price on both theirs. Yeah, so there's the gun. Let's go ahead and drop the mag. Let's go ahead and drop the mag. Clear it. Yep. And let's take a look at the case. This one comes with a second mag with a goofy-ass speed loader. I don't believe in this style. Just buy an Uplula. They cost like 30 bucks, but you'll never need another one. Comes with extra back straps because they are interchangeable, which is a nice thing because not everybody has the same size hands, although everybody should be the same size hands as me. Comes with a little chamber flag, which is nice for if you're at the range with somebody new, you can teach them proper etiquette. Inside the top here, you get a manual, which is stuck with glue. A firearm safety bump, a lock that is branded. Good on you, Walter. And you get a Allen key and mini screwdriver for adjusting your really mini screwdriver oh it's for the rear sight which we'll take a look at later but it's nice to give you all the tools necessary to get the gun up and running nice close cell foam down here too i like that so we're going to go ahead and close this back up i like hard cases they stack well in a closet while the guns sit in the safe good on you so let's take a look at the gun. The Walter PDP is basically, basically, don't fight me in the comments, the PPQ replacement. It's also the P99 replacement. So the P99 is discontinued after this year. So the PDP is your choice if you want one of these uh, Walter 9 millimeters. This is the compact version. However, I believe, no, it's it's not. I thought it was chassis. Is it chassis? Let's see. Hell yeah, it is. It's a chassis system. So this is a chassis system, which means you can take the fire control group out, although it does use roll pins, a la the 365, and swap this into a full-size frame with a 4-inch barrel, or you can just put a 5-inch top on it, whatever you want to do, and then you would have a complete setup. But it's a polymer frame, steel slide, 9 millimeter. Comes stock with two mags of 15 round capacity, flesh fit, so fits really nice. So this is a Glock 19 competitor. I made a short about it. I'm thrown off by the looks. It kind of gives me APX vibes because, well, this is my 1911. And even though it's not taller, you can see visually they're actually the same height. Somehow... That extra couple millimeters right there make this top look so chunky. I think with an optic on it, it would make it actually look a little bit thinner. But my God, for some reason when it's in my hand, this top just, it looks and feels like chunk. Could also be because it's so wide. You can definitely see how wide it is. Is that a detractor? Only if you're an aesthetics driven guy, kind of like I am. The full five inch gun 
and the competition one, which is 5.25 inches, I believe, make this look a little bit more palatable. But in my opinion, it's a little bit ugly. But as long as it functions, who cares? You will notice some similarities from here down to a Canik. That is because Canik licensed their design from Walter. And the Canik Meta, Canik TP9s are both based on the P99. This being an evolution of the P99 shares a lot of those features. So the super extended slide lock slide, or excuse me, yes, yeah, slide lock slide release is indicative of that. Has a reversible mag release, although this one is not ambidextrous. Takedown is technically ambi because you have to pull down both sides at the same time. This has the medium rear back strap on it, which fits in your hand well. Actually fits right into the crook there. Although I prefer the slightly flatter one because I like to get my hand up as high as possible. And I feel that this one drags my hand down just a touch. Uh, Overton Windex, hell of a name. I, I haven't watched enough of his stuff to understand why his channel's name like that. But he does it best when he says this finger doesn't matter. This part of your hand doesn't matter. This is what actually secures the firearm. Although I will say ergonomically, I would rather have a slightly longer frame. That's just personal opinion. I don't like the way because I have damaged hands. My pinkies are actually different lengths. You can see on this hand, I have the boxers break. So these two fingers are actually shorter than they should be. So when I'm fully gripping a handgun, this finger doesn't come all the way around. It's just uncomfortable but that's an individualized problem. Has a trigger safety, so no manual safety on the outside of the gun other than the trigger safety and the firing pin block, which most striker fire guns have. Pretty, pretty, pretty common. Uh, the texturing, I like it. It's got grooves on both sides. Not such a fan. They really don't do anything for grip. And honestly, they just, they don't, they don't do anything. They're just there for a design. The texturing is nice though. You can easily grip it and it has nice checkering on the front and it has nice checkering on the rear. So once it's in your hand, it's not going to slide around. I know that's a dumb thing to say, but uh, you can just see how you can easily slide your hand off of guns without front strap checkering. Dumb demonstration, but in the heat of the moment, it may matter to you, especially if you're in a competition. Does have front and rear slide serrations, very deep cut ones. However, they're shallow at the top and the bottom. So you have to grab them right in the middle. It allows you to lobster press check. Yes, you can do the John Wick press check with this one. Although, because this is so set in versus a 1911, that's another reason why it works on a 1911 that you're not gonna get as much of a press check done that way. So you can rely on your extractor when a nine millimeter or excuse me when an external extractor gun has a round chambered it's going to push this end of the extractor out so you'll feel a little bump there it's an easy way to feel it if it's in a holster that allows you to get down that far optics cut on the top you do need plates but at least it is optics cut i believe if you contact walter they will give you a free plate when you buy the guns new don't quote me has the FN style shielded rear sight. I say FN style, it could be a lot of other manufacturers, but the FN 509, FN 545, all of those have this shrouded style, although it's not as pronounced and obnoxiously stupid looking because they have the rear Honda spoiler on the FNs. This is just on the sides. I like that it is adjustable for elevation and windage with that little screwdriver you get. That's good. I like that the plate is in front of the rear sight and doesn't replace it. However, you could knock this out, put some higher sights if you want to run an optics and co-witness. You're not going to run one unless you use, I think, a 407 or a 507 mic co-witness, but they don't direct mount. So the plate's going to be that high and then the optic is going to be up here. So disregard what I just said. comes with three dot sights. They are not night sights. They might be bio or light luminescent which means when you hit them with a the light they'll light up for a little bit but three dot arrangement is fine it's not my style i prefer a blacked out rear with a high vis front but again that's just because i do a lot of point shooting and self-defense shooting and a three dot sight like that it takes too long to acquire if you get good at making sure that that front sight winds up in the sight aperture then you're good if you have to try to line up three dots, equal height, equal light, all that bullshit, you're going to wind up with a, well, dead you, especially in a panic situation. 
Anyway, sorry about that. This is a gun that was manufactured in the Deutschland, Germany, and shipped in. That's why it has a serial number on the frame, slide, and barrel. United States guns, United States built guns, only have it on the frame or the fire control unit in this case. Let's talk about the trigger. Once you depress the trigger safety, which is not uncomfortable, it's a little bit rounded off. Uh, some guns have a sharp one, don't really care for that. But once you pull that back, you'll see a little bit of take up. False click, I wish it didn't click like that. But then you come back to the wall and bow break. Just in case you couldn't see it against the black background. Wall break. Walters have probably the best striker fire trigger. Although I think the Canik is actually shorter than this Walter. You can see there was actually a bit of creep there, like three, three and a half millimeters, four millimeters, versus some Canics, which are just instant. But overall, very pleasant. About a five pound trigger. Nothing will ever beat a 1911 trigger, though, just because of its simplicity. Simplicity can equal good. But we are not being detractors. The mags are drop free because there is no magazine safety or magazine disconnect. So, once we've done that, we've taken a look around the gun. What do you say we take her apart in order to do that? Lock her back visually. Check, make sure you can see daylight everywhere. Use your finger to make sure there's no round in there. And yeah, I know you don't have to, but you know what? It took an extra second. It took me longer to explain why it doesn't take that long than it did to do it. So get over yourselves, children. Once you've done that, go ahead and bring the gun back. Drop your two tabs. You do have to pull the trigger since it is striker fired. And then you just pull it off. Very nice. Take the spring out. Like I said, this is a used gun, but it's a used gun that's never been fired, which is like I said, a lot more common than you think. Take the barrel out. Let's start with the slide. You can see it's got some lightning, not lightning, but lightning cuts in it. What's interesting is that it appears to use a Glock style front sight. You can see it actually is screwed in in the front. So that would be interesting. If you could just swap that out with a high front sight, you could co-witness with like a 407, 507 or a Viper Venom or excuse me, a Vortex Venom, because those have rear trenches in them. That would be cool. Underneath here, they lightened it up there. You got some cuts there. There's your drop safety or firing pin block. There's your striker. Very common, very simple, very easy peasy. And I do believe, quote me if I'm wrong, that the PDP slides fit on the PPQs. And that's the last time I use that many acronyms at once. You can see here, the takedown is much more robust than a Glock. It actually uses a locking, or excuse me, uses a steel pin versus just a flat bar that goes across. So this is actually a little bit more secure than that is. Very nice big spring right up on top. So easy for maintenance. You can clean it and lube it very easily. The firing control group, like I said, those two pins, roll pins, knock those out and it looks like it'll come out. Yeah. All right. That's pretty cool. Overall fit is pretty good. Overall finish is pretty good. I mean, it's polymer. What are you going to do? I am interested in the fact that they didn't put any sort of steel insert up front. I would have done that to, number one, increase the nose weight a little bit and reduce le recoil lift. But I also would have done it because other companies like Smith & Wesson does it on guns that are hundreds of dollars cheaper. Well, they do it to reinforce the gun. Yeah, that's my point. When you build a gun that has a polymer lower, well, look at Forgotten Weapons. Polymer framed handguns have been around a lot longer than just since Gaston Glock. But the longevity, the, the fact that polymers will at some point return themselves to the earth from which they came, whereas steel will stay very, very long time. There's guns from the 1600s that are still fireable. Says a lot to me. And I'm sorry if you're one of the detractors, but I prefer an all metal gun. But I won't hate on this. This is a great tool. It's just not a collector's piece. I've never seen anybody that goes, man, I can't wait till I get home because I'm going to buy me another polymer handgun. Because they don't look that good. Is that a negative? Yeah, not really. But I just wanted to throw that out there. I don't, I, I'm not a polymer handgun guy. I'm also not a rifle guy. Flame me in the comments. Put Dorcas 
D-O-R-K-U-S in the comments to let me know you got this far because, boy, did I just go off on a tangent. But that's the reassembled gun. It's very simple, very Glockish. Glock Gaston, I'll give him credit. He created a lot of features that a lot of guns have used for inspiration, if not flat out stole. And some companies like Walter improved them by making the takedowns better, easier to use, much more functional. So that is the Walter PDP-C. It's a great choice if you're looking for a smaller quote-unquote handgun. Uh, shorter frame does make it easier to conceal, but the just the, the goddamn Toblerone effect. I'm going to call this the Toblerone effect. The first generation APX A1s have the same problem, where the top looks so chonky, even though technically it's not. But anyway, that's what I think of that gun. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Leave me a comment. Let me know if you have one. How do they shoot? Should I buy one? Because I've never owned one. And come back for another video. That was awkward. I didn't finish that line like I meant. So I'll talk to you later.